Okay, uh, another simple machine is a lever, and here we have a picture of a guy uh, or girl lifting a box uh, up with a lever. So the whole idea here is that this person may not be strong enough to lift this box up as high as he or she wants it to go. So what does he do? He uses a simple machine. A machine is gonna make it so that he applies a small force over a long distance to do a certain amount of work. That work that he puts into it is going to be equal to the work that comes out on the other end. But notice, since the fulcrum is so close to the load, the box won't move very high up. But the box, the force that the box is lifted with is much stronger than the force that this guy pushes down with over here. So the idea is that the amount of work that goes in equals the amount of work that goes out. Now we know that's not absolutely true because there's going to be some uh, energy lost in the friction here um, with the, of the fulcrum on the, the lever. So we talked then about the efficiency of the lever, the efficiency of the machine, uh, but we'll get there in a second. But here we have a, uh, the, this guy. So let's, uh, let's say that he's applying a force of 100 newtons. And let's say he pushes down uh, 1.5 meters. So 100 newtons and 1.5 meters, that's the work or the force in Here's the distance that the lever is pushed down. So the work in, we'd say, equals force in times distance in. Um, and we can do that in our head. That's going to be 150 joules, OK? Force times distance. Over here, we'll calculate the work out. Actually, we don't even need to calculate the work out because we just assume that the amount of work that it goes into this is going to be equal to the amount of work that goes out, uh, comes out. So we know that the work out is going to be 150 joules. Okay. Now let's say this box has a uh, a weight of uh, I don't know 200 newtons. Okay. If the box has a weight of 200 newtons, then that means we want to know how high up the box will go. All right. This guy's pushing down a long distance over here. The box is only going up a short distance. So we can figure out how high this box is going to go using the equation work equals force out times distance out, all right? We know the work is going to be 150 joules because that's what it was on that side. We know the force is 200 newtons, so how high will the box go? We'll uh, multiply times D. We'll divide both sides by uh, D. Uh, I'm sorry, by 200, and D will equal 200 divided by, uh, I'm sorry, get that backwards, 150 over 200. 150 joules divided by 200 newtons is going to give us a distance of um, 0.75 meters. So that's how high this box will go up. It goes up 0.75 meters. All right. Now, next question that I might ask would be, what, what's the mechanical advantage of this? And of course, that is the mechanical advantage means how much more force did you get out of this machine than you put into it? So we say MA equals force out divided by force in. All right. Remember, it's not work out over work in. It's force out divided by the force that you put in. Well, if this guy puts in 100 newtons of force and he gets out 200 newtons of force, then we would say 200 newtons divided by 100. The mechanical advantage of this lever is 2. All right. No units for mechanical advantage. It's a ratio of force out over force in, therefore you do not need, um, you do, do not need a, uh, a unit. If this box weighed 400 newtons, then the, the, it would probably only lift uh, a quarter of 1.5, um, which is like 0.38 or something, 3.75 um, meters. So it would go up less distance. Again, the whole idea is you do, you have less force on the input side over a longer distance, you get out a stronger force over a smaller distance. So again, it's like a small force with a big distance on this side, big force, small distance on this side, but the two things multiply together to equal the same thing. Work in equals work out. Okay? The more, the higher the mechanical advantage, the less distance the thing will raise up, um, but the less force you also have to put into it. That's how you can raise a car. 
uh, you can jack up a car by basically cranking a lever um, hundreds of times. Each time you crank almost a meter of distance with a small force and the huge force is the weight of the car being uh, lifted up that requires a huge force but notice the car only raises about a millimeter each time you crank that uh, pump. So it takes you know several hundred cranks in order to get that car up to the point where you can have enough clearance to change a tire. Um, hopefully you've changed a tire at some point in your life. If not, maybe it's time to learn how.